Welcome to X Connect the Show. My name is Kareem Kanji. We are here with episode number three of our Bank Connect series. Uh, before we get started, well, I need to uh, thank some of our partners and some of our sponsors as well uh, who ensure that the lights stay on here. Uh, so first of all, I need to thank our uh, production partner, Hearth TV. Go check them out at hearth.tv for all some, a lot of cool stuff that they're putting together. Also need to thank Big Time Design for all of their design and web work that they give to us. Uh, and as well, Third Ocean, which brings to you everything X Connect. So go check them out at thirdocean.com. And our Bank Connect partners need to thank Outcast Entertainment, StickerU.com, and the ING Direct Cafe in Toronto at 221 Young Street. Don't forget, make sure that you register for Bank Connect on February the 15th. You can go to bankconnect.eventbrite.com. It is going to be phenomenal. And one of the panelists uh, on that event is here today, live and in living color. Steve Mast, how you doing, Steve? How you doing there, Kareem? I'm Very doing good. well. Thanks for, for coming uh, this morning. It's my pleasure. Yeah, this uh, warm spring morning. Yeah, it's a little unusual for February, is it not? I, I think so, and it's yeah. a little bit scary too. <laughs> I can be honest, I think I'm really enjoying it. I could handle winters like this. So yeah, if I want to go ski, I can go north. That's it's fine. not too bad. I remember, I think the, the, our last show was freezing cold here. Yes, you know, was, so yeah. That's Toronto weather, I think, <laughs> for all of us. But thanks so much for coming. You are the, uh, the co-founder yes. and president of uh, Delvinia. Yes. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Delvinia? What do you guys do? What are you guys all about? Uh, primarily focused on strategy in the digital space. So mm -hmm. um, the official title, if you will, is Digital Strategy Customer Experience Design Firm, which is a bit of a mouthful. Okay. Um, in essence, we study the behaviors of, of not just Canadians, but consumers and customers in general, mm -hmm. uh, based around their digital behaviors and activities they're doing, whether it's mobile, social. And then we bring that intelligence back into the programs or strategies we develop for organizations like banks and financial institutions in Canada. How, how long have you guys been around for? 1998. Long time. It, it is. That's like yeah. forever. Yeah. In this space, it absolutely is forever. That so was uh, before uh, the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was back where, dare I say, CD-ROMs. <laughs> yeah. How did you guys get started? Uh, it was really born out of uh, four actual partners that started the organization. Okay. Um, and they had a bit of an idea that they wanted to... Um, an organization where it was based around research and understanding, again, back to this understanding of people's behaviors around this, and then be able to create a consulting side of it where we'd go out and we'd share our research information back to organizations. And then the third part of it was, you know, we create digital marketing programs and those kinds mm -hmm. of things for organizations. So it's changed and morphed over the years, but uh, the number one thing it's always held fast for is really it's in the name of the organization. So Delvinia really means delving in and digging deep. So that's really the essence of where it came from. So we've sure. held to that philosophy from day one. Wow. And with, with this huge explosion over the past few years with everything social and social media, mm -hmm. uh, how has that changed what you guys are uh, providing for your clients? Um, on a couple of fronts. One is uh, obviously because we have digital in the name of our organization, sure. uh, we get lots of calls talking about you know, how do we leverage social media, how do we leverage digital in general, but particularly how we leverage social media. And, mm -hmm. and we all hear it's a very powerful medium, but how do we really leverage it? Um, the other part of it is because we have such a strong customer insight bent to us, research bent to us, it's providing a whole new dimension around what's sort of referred to as unstructured data, right? Okay. So this whole phenomenon around big data, you hear a lot of trending people talking yeah. about how to drop the trend. That's, you know, a big one right now. Yeah. Um, but it's providing a whole new dimension for us to understand the behaviors. So, so excuse me, it's around real-time behaviors, uh, mm -hmm. location-based behaviors, all these kinds of things are being brought together. So we're looking at that combined with some of our more sort of traditional sort of survey style, analytical style, bringing those two pieces together to mm -hmm. make a better picture of what the consumer or the customer looks like. So um, it's really on those two fronts. Uh, it's interesting though, I think uh, from a social media perspective that the thing that we're really seeing most of the traction, us as an organization helping financial institutions and other organizations, it, it's really around the people process side of things, right? So okay. it's less about the on the ground, uh, let's create a cool contest or campaign. There seems to be a, a much bigger movement now to step back and look at, okay, we need to put in the right governance programs in place. We need to put the right the guidelines in place. Mm -hmm. um, we really need to work from the inside out, as I often refer to it to my, to my clients. Interesting. 
Uh, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't touch on, if we didn't touch on for the at least a couple of minutes. You know, today's a, uh, an interesting day in, in both the web technology and the markets with Facebook today mm. um, uh, announcing their, their IPO or plans for an IPO. Um, it's huge. Any, it is. It is. So I think afterwards we're getting together at our banks and pooling some resources mm. to go and invest. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what you think is going to happen and any insights you might have for uh, not necessarily giving advice to people, but you know, what what can we expect? You know, is this going to be huge? Is it is is it going to be more noise than substance? Hmm. Um, I mean, I think everything that Facebook does, because they are you know they are a big giant in this space. I think everything they do is pretty huge, right? Yeah. So um, this is going to put them in a sort of different mode now. Whereas in the past they've been, uh, you know, they have investors, they have strong investors behind mm-hmm. them, uh, back in the organization. But, you know, to be honest, it's been a bit of a wild west with them. They can, they can kind of dictate what they want to do. And it's been led by, you know, look, you can't deny that Mark uh, Zuckerberg is not a visionary guy and, mm-hmm. he, and he's sort of stuck with that. Once you go public uh, and you have shareholders and uh, the organization will change a lot, so yeah. it'll bring in uh, a very different investment structure into the organization where they can probably do a lot more things than they didn't have the chance to do in the past, possibly. Interesting. Uh, but it'll, it'll put them under uh, a sort of a different lens within um, you know, the governments and so on and so forth around looking at them, shareholder scrutiny and on and on and on. So it'll probably change the way that they uh, run the organization over the next couple of years. Sure. Uh, but I mean, I think it's honestly, I think it's a great thing. I really do. I think that the one thing is we haven't had uh, an organization, you know, go public of this size. Um, mm-hmm. I think the last really, really big one I heard on CBC this morning was uh, really was Google. Yeah. Um, so and that was like, what, 05, you know, 04, oh, wow. yeah. 2004, 2005. So, um, you know, it, it's a good boost to show that this is alive and well and things are uh, things are prospering. Good. It'll be interesting to watch over the next few months. It will be very interesting, yes. But, and uh, I'm going to, uh, like you, pool some money and yeah. uh, <laughs> put my life savings out. Exactly, no, I'm kidding, I'm exactly. Um, I, I guess, you know, the reason that we're here is uh, is, is to discuss, you know, the, the, the phenomenon of social media. Uh, and, and what's happening in the banking industry and in the financial industry? Um, I know that you guys, uh, as, as a firm, have had some banks, um, as, Lots of banks as, yes. as, as clients. You know, some people can go on to your uh, to your LinkedIn. You guys have worked with uh, companies uh, like Scotia Bank, mm-hmm. uh, Royal Bank, I believe, yes. and uh, Manulife. Yes. Uh, financial, um, and you, you've probably you know talked to them about you know from the inside out yes. uh, as well and uh, understanding their needs. Yes. Um, I want to ask you, um, you know, they're banks like uh, ING, which are very active online here in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, and the more, I, I guess, um, I don't know what they call level one banks, uh, who are massive Canada-wide, branches all over the place. Um, who, a lot of people on the ground. Yeah, yes. who seem to be slower it seems, to adapt and adopt some of these new tools and new tactics. Mm. I wonder if you can talk on that a bit. Sure. Um, I mean, one thing that, uh, and there's a big difference between, say, for example, an ING and an RBC, right? Sure. So, uh, you know, they both provide banking-related products. Um, RBC is more diverse in the sense it provides investment insurance and other kinds of products as well. Uh, but they live in such a heavily regulated environment. Mm-hmm. Um, not that ING doesn't hold to those same things, but because they are, you know, primarily in an online fashion, it gives them a little more autonomy to, to try and do different things. And um, I love what they do. From they just they seem to be always innovating and playing. And I think uh, I you know I have a ton of respect what they do. And, and I don't think there's been a been a presentation I haven't been at at one of the other organizations where ING doesn't come up on a on a presentation or on a screen saying why can't we do this? And yeah. When you start to peel back the onion and look at, you know, try to take back the regulation, the guidelines, um, you know, the lawyers, everything else that's involved with it, uh, mm-hmm. it's an incredibly complex problem, right? Um, and that's why typically what's happened uh, or has been happening really for the last few years when it comes to social media is it tends to be very tactical, uh, it tends to get pushed into a silo. Sure. A bit of a test and learn kind of uh, thinking behind it. I mean, we've worked on many different programs. Scotiabank International, for example, uh, we built a, a whole community connecting. This was done in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, as just a pilot, as a test, we built this whole community around connecting 
banking customers in Trinidad with uh, musicians. So it was this community. I know it sounds like a really interesting, yeah. They were trying to bridge the gap in a cultural divide. So you had this Canadian bank there that really wasn't cultural fit. Yeah. So they were like, well, what's the cultural things going on here? So it was things like music and fashion and these kinds of, they had a okay. big car culture. So we decided to create this hub or this community to connect these two people together. So this, is, this was back in 2005. So this was even before Facebook was really wow. Facebook and Twitter and so on. So they were already experimenting and playing with these things and trying to gain lessons, learn from it, they could apply to other parts of it, but still very tactical in nature. There wasn't necessarily a big strategic premise around it. Um, what we're seeing now is, uh, you know, a lot of the big banks are realizing that they need to get more up to a strategic level. They need to centralize things more. And it's not about centralizing things to control. That's not what they're trying to do with okay. it. It's to provide the guidelines and the structure mm. for other parts of the organization to actually leverage this. So instead of running 15 different social listening tools across the organization, maybe we just need two, right? Sure. Uh, and maybe how that information or social intelligence gets disseminated across the organization is more centralized, command mm. and control centers, those kinds of things, right? But it just takes time for organizations of the size of this to move on that sure. because of the regulations and the governance they're under. The other thing too is I mentioned there's a lot of people on the ground, right? So yeah. an organization like RBC, Scotia, um, Manulife has you know thousands of advisors. Uh, some are under Manulife, some are just holding the Manulife brand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know when they're out there talking in these social spheres, uh, you know some of their some of the things they're talking about could be taken out of context and yeah. you know if you have someone talking about investment advice is it an inside tip is it something that is going to you know affect the brand as a whole so they just said stop and let's yeah. just remain in this time so we are seeing movement now where they're trying to move up the chain create mm -hmm. a more centralized uh office around it and then disseminate this information and put the empowerment back in the organization so you mentioned before the, the thing that i'm really on right now is building it from the inside out, yeah. getting the employees, training them, mm -hmm. helping them understand the power and potential of this, uh, and then giving them the tools to be able to do this. So yeah. for years, uh, big banks and, and other financial institutions have done a really great job providing all this collateral. You know, yeah. sales slicks and right. you know, they arm the branch managers and their mortgage reps and their investment bankers and arm them with all this information, research, all this kind of great things. And they've centralized it through intranet sites and those kinds of things. Well, social media comes along and has completely disrupted all that. Yeah. Right? So it's like, well, I want to, I want to, you know, I'm a branch manager and I want to Twitter out what we're doing in the local community. Well, you really can't do that because we don't have any rules or regulations around that. So, yeah. so it's really got to start from an overall and then Interesting. bubble down. And, and, so, and so the question becomes then, does it make sense to build from the inside out and do a whole, um, you know, get, get the whole company on board with their various divisions? Um, or does it make sense to, to say, you know what, let's let certain divisions kind of run off with this? Because, you know, for example, you know, uh, the division that uh, all the FAs, the financial advisors mm -hmm. are under, mm -hmm. is going to move very, very, very slow to make sure that they're not moving faster than the governance allows them hmm. to move uh, and they're thereby holding back other divisions yeah, of it, the it, bank. It's going to be both. It's yeah. already embedded in a lot of the different, you know, I don't want to use the word silos, but it's sure. embedded in the different silos within the organization. They're already doing things, trying things. Yeah. Um, they, they, you're not going to be able to get away from that. Sure. It's, uh, so it's probably a bit more of a, it's going to somewhere kind of meet in the middle, so to speak. Um, but the fact that it's, it's lathering up and it's getting, uh, it's getting into discussions of the, of the C-suite, um, yeah. and not just to the discussions of, yeah, let's put, uh, let's put 2% of our, you know, our marketing budget over there. Like they're taking a serious look at it now. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and cause everybody discusses the power and potential of social. Well, we need to really start showing the power and potential of it, right? So, um, and I think that brings to, to another point as well where, uh, you know, there's so much concern, or not concern, but so much effort around trying to justify it from, uh, you know, key performance indicators, ROI, whatever the acronym you want to use. Yeah. Uh, there's so much around that. And, you know, obviously banking and so on, I mean, everything's got to make money. It's got to figure out sure. a model around it. 
But at the end of the day, I mean, it might best serve the organization from a customer service perspective or capacity, right? Mm -hmm. And starting from there and then providing that intelligence across the organization might start to leverage it more and really show the usage of it. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, Bank America. I mean, I think they've done a really great job mm -hmm. doing exactly that, where if you look at, um, Wells Fargo, for example, I'm not trying to name names. We don't work sure. with these companies, so I guess I can. But if you look at them, I mean, you look at their uh, their Twitter feed, and it's all them just pushing content. Just yeah. they're just they're just you know they're just yelling. They're yeah. just using it as a traditional medium. Versus you look at Bank of America, and you know every other tweet is answering someone's customer service question. Yeah. Right. And I think that's phenomenal. I think that's exactly what you want to try to do in in that context. So. Uh, so I think back to your original question, I think it's going to probably meet somewhere in the middle is what's going to happen. A bit of both. Here. Interesting. You, you mentioned a bit about some of the work that you did with Scotiabank International mm -hmm. in, in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you can share with us any of the learnings or if you're not allowed to or if there's something that I, I guess you can learn that, you know, provide some insight into, into what they learned on how some of these tools come together. Sure. Well, I can give you some top level things. I can't yeah. give you any specific numbers, but sure. uh, building your own communities is tough. It's very, very difficult. Now, again, this was a bit pre the kind of Facebook days. I mean, Orca was, uh, was pretty prevalent in that area as well. And we okay. talked about building something within there, but they didn't really have the, the infrastructure in place to be able to do that. So um, that's why the decision was made to build our own thing. But it's very difficult to build and sustain your own community. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in those early days too, like trying to help an organization of that size understand why you need community managers. Uh, you know, it's like, what do you mean you need community managers? We well, need people to actively be involved in this and participating. So all of a sudden it becomes headcount. And can you do that as an organization? Sure, we can do that, but we're going to charge you X. And yeah. so all of a sudden the, the business model starts to kind of fall apart mm. pretty quickly, right? And all of a sudden this neat little innovative project becomes, that was a nice test to learn. What do we take as learnings? And let's just kind of move on, right? Yeah. So I think the difference today now, because you do have um, what's called the social plumbing, uh, more infrastructure in place than you've ever had before. You've sure. got more options, right? Um, I think Google Plus is a sleeping giant. I think it is something that's going to absolutely rock uh, the advisor world. Um, you know, I think about my Manulife client, and they have so many advisors and brokers on the ground. Mm -hmm. They could do some really fun and innovative stuff with. Why? With Google why Plus. Google Plus? What? What? What is? A, what is it about it that that you? Are, are excited about? Uh, it's just, I think, a couple things. One is its, uh, it's search capability is sure. yet to be untapped, right? So the ability to find, right? The, the sort of the blending of this kind of open and closed community where it's a little bit Twitter, a little bit Facebook. It's kind of this blend of the both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, I love things like the huddles and things like that, which I don't sure. think yet people have really got the concept together. So you can imagine people have done virtual seminars and those kinds sure, of things yeah. lots of times. But uh, being able to instantly connect people in huddles uh, just like that very seamlessly. And I mean, there's been a lot of attempts from uh, test and learn using Skype and these other kinds of things. And it just has never really worked well. So mm -hmm. now you've got this platform where you can do so much within it. Uh, that's built or has the potential to be built more on the infrastructure of search, which is, which is I think, key to be able to find these guys and be able to actually communicate with them. Interesting. Um, so it's, it's, it's in its infancy. It hasn't really got out there. Mm -hmm. And there's not anybody really connecting the dot, dots between this phenomenal platform and the potential what you could do with it, right? So beyond even Facebook and so the other ones as well. I'm curious if you've had an opportunity to check out um, Google Plus Your World. No, I haven't. No. Okay, yeah. No. So it's very, very interesting. It allows you to, uh, you know, as soon as Google plugs that piece into their mm. search, you do a search on something. And uh, again, if your uh, if your network is on Google Plus, you'll find a lot of your friends' mm. results in terms of what they've plus one and so on and so forth. Mm. So um, I, I've been big on Google Plus since they announced it. Yeah. You know, and um, only because of the size of their organization. The, um, the engineers that they have on board, uh, and, I, and I think their determination not to get left behind. Yeah, no, I mean, they, uh, they seem pretty dedicated this time. I mean, there was buzz and there was other things along the way, but yeah. uh, they seem pretty dedicated to it. But again, I think it's just unlocking that power and potential of, of not just you know, it is a social network, but all these other technologies that they've been developing, perfecting. I mean, one of the big things with a lot of advisors is just having the 
you know, the collateral at their, at their disposal and being able to use these sort of open platforms, Google Docs, those kinds of things, sure. to be able to disseminate these things and be able to connect the dots, um, it's very, very powerful. It yeah. really is. It's just, again, how does a brand play within that? How do they train people on it? It's going to take time for sure. That's interesting. Um, I was wondering if you could share with uh, any of the other things that you've done with some of the banks. You don't have to name specifically the bank, but you yeah. know, some of the lessons learned maybe. Yeah, I think another one that, uh, you know, I think was pretty interesting and, and a bit of a lesson learned on this one as well. Um, with, uh, with RBC, we worked on a program called Next Great Innovator, um, okay. where we were involved in the, in the very ground up building of it. And this is going back 2005, 2006. These are all um, early days, it sounds. Yeah, it, it doesn't was. sound that long ago, but yeah, it's like yeah. 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four years, five years ago is a long time ago, yeah. Um, but what they, were, what they wanted to do was uh, they wanted to basically use crowdsourcing. So, I mean, you know, now, again, you've got a lot of the social plumbing in place and you could use a lot of other mechanisms to do that far more efficient. But they didn't have anything. So we created a, you know, a web environment for them, just lived off of their, uh, off of their main domain. And essentially what Next Great Innovator was, was it's a contest for all intents and purposes, but we challenged uh, MBA students and undergrads, undergrad students across the country with some of the biggest challenges that the bank faced. Hmm. So things like, you know, um, you know, with this whole new millennial connected generation coming up, how does the bank of the future adapt to that? Uh, Boomers retiring left, right, and center. We're going to have this huge, huge glut of, of retirees. How do we deal with that? Um, how do we deal with customer service in 2012 and 2013, 2014? How do we deal with these sure. kinds of things? So, uh, so these were big fundamental questions that the bank was tackling with. So they thought, let's throw it at some of the you know brightest minds in Canada, and uh, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal success. Uh, and basically, the questions were put out. Um, they had to come back with a business case. The business case was uploaded to the site. Uh, and then from there, uh, the top five came to the main office here and they were judged by a panel of uh, C-level executives at RBC. The interesting sort of learning out of this was got lots of great insights, got lots of feedback, lots of ideas. Some of these ideas actually became actual things within wow. the bank as well, which is phenomenal. It's exactly what they wanted to do with it. But the real interesting insight was it started off, it was uh, housed within kind of marketing and innovation. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of now kind of being underwritten or the business unit that's, uh, that's behind it is HR. And which I thought was fascinating because, because it was, it's a phenomenal recruitment tool to look at the best and brightest minds in Canada yeah. and what they can show and then be able to have them meet. So it had nothing to do with the monetary value of what they were winning as a prize. Mm -hmm. what, the, what the students wanted was they wanted to shake hands with Gord Nixon. They wanted sure. to be able to have a chance to stand in front of you know, the top CEOs of the banking environment and show their stuff. Right? Yeah. So that was, that was the power of connecting those two things. Yeah, That's very, very interesting. Um, you know, moving forward, what, what challenges do banks presently face as they're taking a look at, you know, mobile technology, social media? Hmm. Uh, probably back to this idea of, you know, again, I, I hate to use the buzzword again, but it's this unstructured data. It's this big data, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they already have a tremendous amount of data to contend with. Uh, now you've got you know huge amounts of this unstructured noise going on out there, and how you pull that together and disseminate you know valuable key customer insights out of that, and be able to push that out to the business units. That's a huge challenge. It's mm -hmm. a big challenge, and it's not going away. So you know, mobile has just increased the social sphere. You know, by a factor of whatever, a sure. hundred or a thousand, and because yeah. everybody is you know on it. Um, but then also the other parts of the data you can attach to that location specific. So if someone's near a branch, what do you do with them? Like all those kinds of things are all part of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that as a huge, huge challenge for them as to how they integrate that because I think it's a powerful piece of the equation mm -hmm. that everybody's kind of sitting back going, okay, is this really as big as everybody thinks it is? And it is, it's, and it's going <laughs> to continue to grow to be really, really big. The other thing is they are going to continue to be challenged from a governance perspective as well. Um, as I mentioned before around just, you know, where does it live? I mean, this is constant questions, right? So yeah. I think you're going to see more movements this year to centralizing it. Okay. Um, and again, not centralizing it in the sense of trying to control it, I guess, 
probably there is a little bit of that going yeah. on. But it's much like how brand has gone through its evolution through the you know the decades where you know you need a central control and you need to make sure that everybody is providing a consistent message out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final thing, and I've already touched on this as well, it's the training, right? It's the training of everybody on the ground. And when you've got like look, primarily most of these organizations, um, you know, it's a lot of a retail strategy. You have branch level, you have people That's on the right. ground that are interfacing and and you know, social media is is just a it's another tool, right? It's That's another right. thing in their pocket. Having a conversation like this and talking about my problems and my issues, I mean that's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to solve at the end of the day. So how do we use this medium to be able to solve your financial problems, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and right now, doing it as a, as a sort of a tactical embedded in these silos, they're not going to really best serve their customers at the end of the day. So they need to figure out a way to lather it up. Yeah. And like I said before, it'll probably be somewhere they'll meet in the middle as they move forward. And do you think the training is, and I'm just curious about this, um, my my sense is that it's not just training on you know how do you use the tool oh, no. from a tactical perspective, but you know more about here's what you need to understand about the information that can be transferred. It's everything. It's uh, the 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 technology is just one aspect of it, right? Sure. Uh, it, it's understanding the do's and don'ts of you know what you can and can't say, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know most of these. These people will understand if you're a you know an investment advisor, you understand what you can and can't say to a client or out in the public. I mean, you generally know that. Uh, it seems to be all those sort of common knowledge things seem to fly out the window when the minute you get on Twitter or Facebook. And yeah, that's I, right. It's it's a bit of a weird phenomenon, right? So. Um, so that's why people tend to shy away from it because they're afraid, well, what if I say something or what something I don't wrong. say? And so they're just, it's going to take time, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's probably going to be a generational shift as well as you've got much younger people coming up that have, you know, they're literally have been living and breathing this for many years sure. as they enter into their thirties and they become the next generation of, you know, investment retirement planners, mortgage reps, branch managers, all those kind of traditional jobs, but they are embedded with this technology. They're already used, they live with it. They'll be very Right? Sure. So, you know, the shift is already on. Mm -hmm. um, now, I mean, I think there's definitely leaders of the pack out there. There's organizations that are that tend to be from an outside perspective, look like they're doing a lot of things. ING, you mentioned earlier, which I think is phenomenal things are doing. But I think if you peel the onion back, all these organizations are putting together very comprehensive strategies and got Scotiabank, RBC. They're all working on very comprehensive strategies mm -hmm. that are going to see them rolled out in the next year or two yeah. uh, that, are, that are really smart. I, I really think they're going to get a hold of this. They just have to get around regulations yeah. and all these other things along the way. And it's interesting about the whole regulation part and, and you touched on, you know, we're very careful on what we say because we know our role, but it, when it comes to somebody tweeting something, it seems like, you know, every athlete or, or anyone in entertainment <laughs> seems to have their moment when it seems that they've Whoops. partied too much and they've tweeted something they shouldn't have. Yeah. And, and I'm sure this is a, a huge concern for financial institutions. Um, you know, like you said, somebody might tweet something or post something online that somebody could take as advice, financial advice, and then it can come back to them. Um, and although there could be rules and regulations in place on what you need to do, um, how can um, how how can the governance catch up to this always on technology? Yeah, I, um, or or will it ever? I don't, well, know. I don't think. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, I think it's more. Let's let's take the governance out of it for a second. Sure. I think it's just it's being a little more mindful of people's privacy and those kinds of things, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, you know, that to me would be rule one. Like, don't be sharing someone you're working with private things or discussions or those kinds of things. I, mean, I know that sounds like, well, that's kind of an obvious thing, but it happens today. Uh, for right? sure. It's happening today. Um, there is going to be people that mess up and say the wrong things, right? Mm -hmm. It happens today with or without social media. People go on camera and they say things they shouldn't have said. I probably said things I shouldn't have said <laughs> today. So, I mean, it happens. It's human nature. We make mistakes and we're going to continue to make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, and as social media creates more transparency within these organizations, they have to learn to deal with that and how they handle that without lawyering up every time yeah. around these things. So that's what I'm more talking about. The sure. education and the guidelines around this will help mitigate some of those things moving forward and give people the confidence that I can use this as a powerful mechanism tool to communicate with my customers recruit new customers, understand what their needs are at a local community. We were doing a pilot, this is, this is something completely, uh, doing a little pilot within a small area, just testing to see and listening um, what the conversations are in the area. Can we arm those local uh, retailers with, with information? And it's amazing the mm -hmm. intelligence you can gain from Absolutely. just listening to people, like just, just kind of shut up and listen. I mean, it's kind of the, you know, what I often, tell people <laughs> they probably don't like to hear but sure. I mean there's a lot that you can take away from that and then from there you can start to craft your conversations back out into a local community I think it's a, it's a powerful powerful tool used, used properly absolutely thanks so much for joining us Steve it was my pleasure it's been absolutely. a great uh, great conversation yep. look forward to uh, hosting you again on, on February 15th at the Bank Connect event I'm looking uh, forward to yeah and then so we invite all of you uh, to, to come out to Bank Connect on February the 15th, again, it's at 221 Young Street here in Toronto. Or just go to bankconnect.eventbrite.com. Again, thank you for watching. You can get more information about everything that we're doing on xconnectto.com. Again, my name is Kareem Kanji. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.